welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to take you through how I make my elderberry syrup. This is my container of dried elderberries. I keep bay leaves in there to keep any kind of bugs out. I use a fresh piece of ginger. I use cinnamon. Use whatever kind you like. I use cloves. I reuse containers. This one here was just an old container of cod liver oil. This was an old container of elderberry syrup that I bought. This small container cost me roughly $17 to $23. Can you guys believe that? So I said, no more of that, I'll make my own. And I use a measuring cup for dry items. Let's get started. Normally I use a metal pan, but I wanted to try something different. So I take two cups of elderberries and place them in the pan. Now I'm making a large batch. You can make whatever size you like. I'll put the ingredients in the description box below because I don't really cook by ingredients. So this may not go well for many people. Let me remove my bay leaves and get back to adding these elderberries. Next, I add cinnamon. I use about two and a half tablespoons. I use the palm of my hand, so it's a rough guesstimate. Now it's time for the cloves. I use a rough guesstimate of about a teaspoon or so of cloves. Cloves are very strong, so you might wanna watch out how much of this you add. Next is a fresh lemon, so I'll prepare it like movie magic and it will go in the pot. Bam, there we go. I have washed and I will chop this piece of ginger. It will go in. It's roughly the size of two thumbs. Movie magic again, all chopped. Now that all of my ingredients have been placed in the pot, I will now fill it all the way full of water. Here we go. Now that I have filled the pot with water, I'm going to turn on the eye to low. Now that the eye is on, everything is in the pot, I need to stir it. Keep in mind that cinnamon is a bark. It does not seem to want to incorporate into the mixture. So it's gonna take a while before this will begin to settle down and mix in. But just periodically check it and stir it. You want to make sure that nothing is burning on the bottom or sticking on the sides of your pot. This is a low and slow cooking process. It's going to be on the stove for quite some time. So give it the time it needs. Don't rush off. Trust me, the end result will be amazing. You will start to see the heat beginning to rise. It's warming up. The elements inside are beginning to incorporate. You'll also notice that the berries are filling with water and beginning to release their goodness into the water. The water will become a deep, rich, burgundy color. It's beginning to work. You continue to sit on it while watching and stirring until your mixture has reduced by half. Once your syrup has reduced by half, then you do a final stir and turn off the eye and let it rest until it is room temperature. Mm -hmm. 
Look at how deep and rich in color it is. I'm trying to get enough of it on the spoon so that you can see, but I keep collecting berries. But look how it's rendered down. Isn't that beautiful? Now it's time to let it cool down until it is room temperature. It's time to grab a utensil so that I can pull out the big bits of ginger and lemon. And once I get those pieces out, then I'll move on to the next step. So let me take those out and put those in the compost bucket right next to the pot. Now before I do anything in the kitchen, I make sure that my hands are thoroughly clean. So even though you all haven't seen it, I've washed my hands at least three or four times before touching anything before I start cooking. Now that I pulled all those pieces out, now it's time to collect the berries, place them in the mill, and start milling these berries down to render out the juice. Now I've had this mill a while, but it is a little bit tough for my wrist. So if you have any dexterity issues, you may want to find something else to use to render down your juice if you're going to be repeating the steps that I've shown you here today. If you've never used a food mill like you see here, all I do is place my berries or whatever I'm going to be pressing on the top of my food mill. And I use my spoon to make sure that I'm getting everything pressed down. I just move it around so that it's getting contact with the mill. And I continue to turn and press and then turn it around and or reverse it so that everything is being pressed. I hope that makes sense. This is gonna take a minute, but here is what the juice looks like. Now that all my juice has been pressed, I'm gonna add a few more key ingredients. I usually add a full lemon. This one I have cut in half, so I'm gonna add a half in this section right here. Next, I take some of my fermented ginger and I pour some of the juice off of that into here as well. Last but not least, I'm going to sweeten it to taste. My family likes honey, so I'm gonna place some honey in mine. Now 
that I've added all of my final ingredients, I'm going to incorporate that honey and everything else. And once all of that is incorporated, it's time to use my recycled bottles and bottle this baby up. Before I bottle it, I'm gonna take a little taste of it to see if it has the right flavor that I'm looking for. So I take a little medicine cup. If you have kids or if you have any medicine in your house that comes with a little cup like this, just put a little bit in that cup like I do. Taste it. If it's the right sweetness, go ahead and bottle it up. I have come to the end of a very long process. So now it's time to bottle it up. I just pour mine into a container that has a spout on it and I refill my bottles. This one just so happened to be a cod liver oil. Don't pay that any mind, but you can use whatever you like if you choose to make this for yourself. I hope you found this video useful and that you take the time to make this for yourself, your family, and your friends. I wanna thank you for watching, and most of all, I wanna thank the VA Gardener for asking me to go ahead on and make this for you guys. I hope you enjoy.